we got to talk. I've been getting a lot of questions about this supposed OBS killer called Meld Studio. Presumably because Harris made a video on it recently and it's got a lot of people asking, should you switch over to Meld Studio or should you just stick to regular old OBS Studio? I actually already did a video on Meld like a year ago and if you watch that video, I spoke pretty glowingly about Meld actually. It's got a really slick UI, tons of really cool features that you normally need a bunch of OBS plugins for. But I need you guys to slow down. Stop being cringe and paying full price for Windows with our sponsor VIP SD Keys. You can get a Windows 11 license for as low as $21. Just use my code NUTTY at checkout to get them for 30% off. And if you want to get them for a little bit cheaper, you can get a Windows 10 key for $15 and those can be updated to Windows 11 completely for free. You can pay using a secure payment method like PayPal. They'll send you an activation code immediately and then you can put that in your Windows settings and you're good to go. Check out VIP SD Keys in the link down below. This video is probably gonna come across a lot harsher than I want it to be, both to the team at Meld and to Harris, because I genuinely love what the team at Meld is doing. Some of the things that drive me up the wall about OBS, Meld just does so much better. But I must admit, it really did surprise me that Harris really just mentioned one downside to Meld, because there's actually a lot of them. This isn't meant to be a call out video, by the way. But let's be real, videos are so much more entertaining if you just start beefing with bigger creators. Logan Pauls, fight me, bro. I'll fuck you up. No one saying, son. So here's how this video is gonna work. I'm gonna be doing what I call the sandwich technique. I'm gonna start off with a few compliments about Meld. Then I'll get into a few things that I think you should be wary about. Then I'll I'll finish it off with a few more compliments. It's a form of manipulation, which I'm an expert at, might I add. I really like how simple Meld's UI is. I'm a sucker for rounded corners and Meld makes this so much easier. You just click in the corners and then you drag in and boom, you, you, you have rounded corners. You, you can turn your camera into a circle in like literally seconds. It's so cool. If you want to add a drop shadow, you just add an effect, select drop shadow, and boom, you got drop shadows. You want to add an outline to your camera, you just add an effect, boom, you got outlines, baby. It's so easy. Adding a capture card to your canvas, cool. Here's a placeholder of where your capture card's going to be before you've actually even selected it. I love this Q button in the audio mixer. It makes it really easy to monitor your audio without having to go to this cringe menu like you have to do in OBS. It's got built-in move transition, built-in multi-streaming, built-in effects, all without needing any plugins. There's just a lot of really smart UX decisions that they've made all throughout the app, but there are a lot of hidden sacrifices that you'll have to make that aren't immediately obvious. And I mean a lot. For example, as far as I can tell, there's no way to add VST plugins to your microphone. A lot of people add EQ and compression to their mic to improve the quality of their voice or add noise suppression to get rid of the background noise coming from your PC. This is something that's really easy to do in OBS. Meld only has three audio filters. One of them's a gain filter and another one's a stereo panner. So really there's only one audio filter that has anything to do with making your voice sound better and it's called Magic Mic. So he, who even knows what that's supposed to do? If you wanna set your resolution to anything other than the ones predefined in the settings, tough luck you basically have no flexibility with your video settings other than changing the bit rate. And that's, that's basically it. Lots of people also love the ability to dock things like Twitch chat right inside OBS so they don't have to have a separate Chrome window open just to read Twitch chat. And that's not something you can do in Meld. If you have a stinger transition that you wanna bring over from your OBS setup, Meld doesn't have any stinger transition support. And even if it did, there's no per scene transitions. So you pretty much are stuck with the same transition for all of your scenes. Wanna remove your background without using a green screen? 
OBS has a built-in background removal feature. You don't have that in Meld. I can go on and on. The point is there's a lot of really basic features that are just absent from Meld. So I did find it a little bit odd that the only feature that Harris mentioned in his video was the lack of enhanced broadcasting. It kind of gave the impression that the only features missing in Meld were ones that advanced people use, but none of the features I mentioned were advanced features. They're core features that a ton of people care about. Like, can we just be honest with ourselves? If Meld didn't have rounded corners, drop shadows, and built-in move transitions, would, would we really be paying attention to Meld? I know it sounds harsh. I feel so bad even saying that because it sounds so harsh, but it's true. I know your mind was blown when you saw that clip of like clicking to round corners. Like, don't lie. Even I thought that was dope. And I know the team at Meld is watching this too. And they're, they're you're probably going to jump in the comments section and be like, oh, this is in the works. That feature's coming in the next update. That feature, oh yeah, that's on our roadmap. It's not just a lack of features. They can add all of the features that I just mentioned and then some, and I would still be hesitant to recommend switching over to Meld because the reality is OBS is free, open source, and used by like 90% of streamers. Meld is closed source software. That means the bulk of all development and all innovations that are gonna be done for streaming are gonna hit OBS first before they hit anyone else. The new enhanced broadcasting feature of OBS is a perfect example of this. This was a collaboration between OBS, Twitch, and NVIDIA to provide 4K AV1 quality, multiple transcodes to every Twitch streamer. And that kind of collaboration is just never gonna happen with Meld. Like think of every single time that NVIDIA releases a new feature for streamers. The NVIDIA noise suppression filter in OBS is insanely good. And that came to OBS first before it came to anyone else. Again, these are not niche advanced features. These are core features that even beginner streamers are gonna use and you're just gonna miss out on them if you decide to switch over to Meld. Now, I was very careful when I said OBS is free because I know some of you guys were like, oh, but Meld is free. Meld is also free. Right now, Meld is free, but for how long? See, Meld is closed source, but more importantly, Meld is actual investors that are funding the whole project. Nobody invests in a product with no earning potential. I can almost guarantee you Meld will eventually have features that you need to pay to get access to. And I don't, by the way, I don't have a problem with that at all. There's nothing wrong with charging money for a product. I literally have a website where I charge you guys money for my widgets. $10 a month, every month in perpetuity, no opt-outs. I don't think the team at Meld is going to pull the rug out from under us and start charging for Meld once we all get used to using it. But it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could at least start charging for features that are currently free. Although they have reassured me that that won't be the case and I do take them at their word. But the risk is always there. That's not the case with OBS. If OBS wants to start charging money, it's open source. Someone's just going to fork it. So like they literally couldn't charge money even if they wanted to. So far, all of my interactions with Meld have been pretty positive. I don't think that they're gonna start charging for core necessary features. I imagine it's just gonna be things like custom effects or custom widgets, but you can almost be sure that they're gonna start charging for something. Like that is absolutely gonna happen at some point. We didn't even talk about performance yet. In my experience, OBS seems to run much more lightweight. I don't really have any hard numbers to prove this, but just having the app open with one scene and one source, Meld uses anywhere from 12 and a half to 15% of my GPU. When I use OBS, it uses like 5% of my GPU. I know Task Manager is not a great way to measure GPU performance, but OBS consistently shows less GPU usage and basically 0% CPU usage, even when I'm recording compared to Meld. And the thing is, OBS also gives you a lot more flexibility in your encoding settings, so you can make it easier to run on your computer if you wanted to. At worst, I feel as though the two programs run about the same performance, 
but I haven't really found anything that indicates that Meld runs better than OBS. Yet, they explicitly claim on their website that it runs at a lower CPU usage. I'm not trying to start some shit. I'm just genuinely curious if they have any hard numbers to back this up because I've, I've seen this claim before that Meld is lighter weight than OBS, but like based on what? I, I, don't, I don't know where that comes from. The good news is in terms of image clarity, personally, I didn't notice a huge difference between the two. I recorded the gameplay you see on screen side by side. One of these is Meld, the other one is OBS Studio. Can you even tell which one is which? I do notice that the grass is sharper in some frames in the OBS recording, but like be honest, if I didn't slow down the footage and highlight the specific area of the screen to look at, would you even have noticed that? And this example is cherry picked as well. Like I could probably find some frames or some examples where the meld recording would look better than the OBS recording. But in terms of like, in, in terms of a live stream, is any one of your three viewers really gonna pixel peep that much and then leave because they're like, oh, the grass is not quite as sharp in this video. This is clearly using meld or whatever. And if the difference in quality really bothers you that much, you were never gonna use meld. Like, don't lie. You were, just, you were never even gonna consider using meld to begin with. The kinds of people that are that particular about image quality were always gonna stick to OBS the whole time. The image quality is not what I have an issue with. The real issue is that Meld only supports H.264 recording. And that's gonna be a really big deal soon if it's not already a big deal now. Pretty much every computer made in the last 10 years has been capable of HEVC, which is a much better quality than H.264. And Twitch and YouTube already support it. And pretty soon, Twitch is also going to support AV1, which is even better quality. YouTube right now supports AV1, and Meld doesn't support AV1 or HEVC. Again, this goes back to what I said earlier. OBS is just going to get the latest features first, and they're features that actually matter. Every streamer, even those with potato PCs, can stream in HEVC. Like, this isn't something that you need some advanced setup for. Everyone can, your computer right now, if you're a streamer, your PC can already do it. And your PC can't do it, then you must be streaming at like 360p or something because your computer's like from the Flintstones ages. Everybody cares about image quality and currently OBS is just better equipped to handle that. Look, I don't want to go on and on about how Meld doesn't have this feature that OBS has, blah, blah, blah. The whole point of Meld is not to be an OBS killer. It's meant to be the easier, sexier alternative to OBS for people that already tried OBS but got too frustrated and gave up. We're at the last layer of that sandwich technique in case you didn't realize. If there's one piece of advice that I can give the Meld team, carve out a niche that captures the needs of 5% of the streaming community and hyper focus on delivering towards that community. If you're an established streamer who already uses OBS, Meld isn't gonna offer you anything that you haven't already been able to achieve in OBS for literally years. But that's not a bad thing. Just because Meld isn't the best streaming software ever, it doesn't mean it doesn't have a place in the streaming community. Meld recently added in a built-in combo widget and it's built right into the app. And this thing is super cool. It's like a mini streamer bot widget that works with Twitch and YouTube and you don't need streamer bot for. In fact, I recently released my own music widget on my website and some dude on Twitter figured out how to take in my music widget and build in a customizer directly inside Meld, which I had no idea you could even do. I've never seen anything like that in OBS before and that's super cool. Keep doing stuff like that. That stuff is really innovative and exactly what Meld's target audience needs. By the way, that music widget is up on my website as well as all my other custom widgets, a lot of which work with Meld, by the way. See, even though I made an entire video that probably made the Melty shit their pants, my stuff still works for you guys. And that means I must like you guys a little bit because if this was Streamlabs, this, you know, you know what I'm saying? I would have, I would have raised all hell if I thought you guys were like Streamlabs. Come back uh, and 
watch more of my videos or else. Oh yeah, also check out the member exclusive widgets on my website. I'm working on this Squid Game vote box thing that will be exclusive to members on my website. So check it out. Uh, come and watch me on Twitch. I'm live two times a week. Uh, yeah, and all of that stuff, you know what I mean?